Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I'm your host, Chris Spangle. We Are Libertarians brings you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves, and boy does it. Think of us as the love child of National Review and Mad Magazine. We explain to you what the hell is happening in our world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, share this episode with friends, and support us through PayPal or Patreon at wearelibertarians.com. We are supported by listeners like you, so $1 per episode by pledging $5 a month helps us grow. We are always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at wearelibertarians.com. If you uh, need life advice from Dear Leader or the many successes of the We Are Libertarians cast, please send us an email, a political question, romance question, whatever, hog feeding question. We've got, we've got experts on that, too. If you are new to the program, we catch up for the first 20 minutes or so, then deep dive into analyzing current events in society from a libertarian perspective. This show is for adults, by semi-adults, so please be warned the language is strong and offensive. With us is, as always, Greg Lenz. Greg, how are you doing? I'm doing well, buddy. How are you feeling after your uh, reconciliation with the one and only Rob Kendall? It's been uh, it's been an up and down uh, 24 hours. If you haven't listened to yesterday's show, uh, then you heard that Rob and I have, have come together. I felt he was very insulting, though. Did you? Did, did you not? I felt that it went as well as it possibly could have. I felt that he, he was very uh, insulting. Jeremiah Morrill, you're with us as well. Dear Leader, hello. Have you caught up uh, with that? I did. I, I listened to it today. Did you? I didn't do show prep. I listened to you and Rob. Okay. Did you feel that <laughs> I thought Rob... the apology is more important than Greg's uh, Greg's notes? Did you feel that it was a good apology? Uh, I think you both met as close to halfway as you could. All right. And, and still walking out with uh, without being too ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> Harry Price is with us as well. Harry, how are you? Going good, going good. Hanging out with Gunther mostly today. Yeah? How's that going? That's going good. Uh, yeah. I did do some show prep watching videos, but mostly I was um, hanging out with uh, hanging out with my daughter. She's finally one month old. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Also with us is Kat Anagnos. Kat, how are you? Hello. I'm great. How are you? Uh, out and finally a woman. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, it's... Uh, <clears throat> been great honestly uh, i've gotten a lot of attention which i love <laughs> all right so uh greg we've got a big so we're gonna post this uh it'll probably be posted right about the time that uh, james comey starts his testimony but we got the the text of the testimony today we did we're, we're recording this on on a wednesday wednesday june 7th um yeah i'm getting i'm guest hosting i guest hosted on rob's uh i'm guest hosting on the johnny rocket launch pad i'm guest hosting on uh, Lions of Liberty tomorrow night. I'm, so much content. I'm guest, Chris Spangles everywhere. I'm guest hosting mm -hmm. on Leading Liberty with Jen Gray. What's that? Shut up, Greg. And uh, so I'll be on that show tomorrow. Who's she? So she a, was a she, lady in Liberty. Eh? She uh, she's a, a very uh, attractive, brilliant uh, young leader of Liberty. So go check out Leading Liberty. I'll be on that podcast tomorrow talking about huh the. Fuck off. Talking about the... Are you flying in studio or is this no, a no, remote no. deal? No, just remote. How does that help you? It helps all of us because I'm going to be sharing the... Uh, I'm going to be standing up for infighting. Infighting is good, so you'll have to check that out. So, but... James... So we're recording this on a Wednesday, and James Comey's testimony was released to the press because James Comey said... I want people to have time to digest this. I want the committee members to have time to digest what I'm going to say. I feel that I have some very detailed and important things that need to be said. Can we break in for an ad read? And Harry has just found a deal on martinarmory.com. <laughs> a Ruger LCP 380 for $265. How much would it be elsewhere? Probably 400 yeah. Holy cow. I know. It is a steal. Yeah. Granted, it's not the one with the laser sight, but like for that price, you, you can add, add the laser sight. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, back to what you're doing. But we're just over here browsing the sponsor website. Yeah, <laughs> I, listen, I'm not mad at all. MartinArmory.com. So, so, yes, James Comey uh, released a statement, and man, was it detailed. And this has been the rap about James Comey. James is a very detail-oriented person. He documents everything. And the letter that he released, the testimony that he will give tomorrow – was full of so many little facts. And I heard Michael Smirkanish, who is a, law, a, a lawyer, talk on CNN today saying, you know, if you're in a courtroom and it's he said, she said in a court situation, the person with the most specific facts is going to win the day. Yeah. And so when it, you have somebody like Donald Trump 
who is very broad in everything that he does and says, it's going to be very difficult to read the Comey testimony, to listen to the Comey testimony tomorrow, and not walk away going, this guy, he documented to cover his ass, but he also felt that this was a pretty important meeting. He did, and the guy's got a track record of being meticulous, and it's something the FBI does as well. I, it's something I would struggle to do, because he, after his first... Um, the first meeting at Trump Tower with the president-elect after he briefed him on the nature of the Russian hacking, he ended up getting immediately leaving the built Trump Tower, getting into the uh, SUV and started typing up the notes from the, uh, the from memory of the meeting and what happened. And so he's met Trump nine times and meticulously took notes after every single uh, occurrence. Now, let's put that into perspective because he met with Donald Trump while head of the FBI – or he met with Barack Obama well, twice. Hey, twice. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it was a very small and it was very superfluous things, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, so the first time he spoke to him ever one-on-one -on -one was, um, let's see, what was he briefing? He was briefing him with a, another individual. And off the top of my head, I can't remember, but it wasn't something very important. It was uh, the second time was simply to give him a call and wish him well uh, as he was leaving office. You, you have to understand, Barack Obama the, to, was known as somebody who didn't meet a lot with his generals. The the movie, I think it's called War Machine on Netflix, that is sort of a spoof on the General McChrystal McChryst affair, kind of covers this. So really recommend that. A great movie. Foreign uh, policy and Brad military uh, military forays were not something he was terribly concerned with. He didn't have a lot of one-on-ones with people, but still, uh, when you talk about a, an administration over the, the six months nine times starting with january 9th i believe it was when he first went, met with donald trump and told him that he was not the subject of an investigation because mm -hmm, he had testified it before congress as well to on the uh on that every other interaction always kind of came back to that with donald trump yes for for james comey and it finally got to a point where he says in his testimony uh he was in a meeting and this this all cir circles around a specific incident where they're at a meeting, and Donald Trump, it's a security briefing, and Donald Trump asks uh, Jeff Sessions. Yeah, it's February the 14th, the, the Oval General. Office meeting, and uh, it was a scheduled counterterrorism briefing for the president. And so he sat behind the desk with the CIA director, the director of the NCTC, um, the Attorney General, Homeland Security, uh, which NT NCTC's National Counterterrorism Center director, the Deputy CIA director. And then Jared Kushner was in the room as well, and um, they were leaving. They the meeting was concluding, and he says, "Hey, stay behind. I'd like to have a, have a word with you." Right. And the Attorney General Sessions slow walked out, mm -hmm. and you know, because he realizes that's a problematic thing. One on one conversations are not something you want to have a lot of as the President of the United States, especially when you are <laughs> eyeing the FBI because they're supposedly investigating you. Michael Flynn or you or, or you your associates or your associates, and which so, they were there. You know, they investigated Carter Page and then um, Paul Manafort. And uh, so the FBI director reports to the attorney attorney general. Yes. And so he uh, later on says i mean here's the here's where i think donald trump is in trouble okay this was a significant enough incident that james comey was thoroughly detailing everything that happened at this incident so he knew that at some point this was going to be something significant yeah especially and, given the situation he's coming in from where with president obama um he didn't get this kind of access or wasn't asked to do this much direct reporting. Absolutely. And it's really improper for the president of the United States. It's actually against regulations for the president of the United States to have direct contact with the FBI director when they're investigating the administration and talk about that specific thing. And so Donald Trump has at least broken some regulations if Well, Comey the thing stands. is Flynn had resigned. So that is the the nature of the discussion. So Flynn had resigned the day before. Okay. And so then Kushner even tried to stick behind a little bit and slow walked out. But he goes, hold on, I just want a word with him. Right. And so then he, they sit down and they start having a discussion, and they start talking about Mike Flynn. Mm -hmm. And in the course, he had he had mentioned that you know, um, you know, he was loyal, and that, that he had the reason he had fired him was the same reason they gave the press is that he had lied about the amount of contact he had had with the Russian ambassador to Mike Pence. And so that he felt they couldn't trust him. And so and then he says, you know, I hope you can see your way clearly to letting this go. Mike's a good guy. Then he agrees. He goes, Mike is a good guy. 
and then he goes yes he is a good guy um and then he goes i really hope that you can see your way to letting this go and so to me that is an obstruction of justice because that would be like saying i mean i don't trump's pretty cavalier and says a lot of things that he wishes he wouldn't you know in hindsight and he comes from the business sector sector and he's not a you know an attorney by any means nor does he know how the decorum or how you're supposed to respond to things in a way that won't get you in trouble but that would be like me saying you know i really hope you you're saying to a detective you know since chris you know chris bangle's already been found or you know not guilty or they've decided you know it's it's they're not going to press charges i hope you can you know let this go and not keep harassing them see i take the opposite view of you i think that this is this is the end of the trump administration because what i i don't know that it is going to meet the level of obstruction of justice but it certainly has the smell of it and that is all the democrats need to uh, pursue this and hopefully win the house the, in their minds hopefully win the house back so that the house can then introduce articles of impeachment and then it becomes an issue and then is donald trump going to get impeached and then thrown out of office i don't think so it's a massive distraction that they don't need but to it have is exactly it when is they're a, trying to pass health care and tax reform and immigration reform and on down the list it's highway tr bills it's transportation week it's infrastructure week did you all hear about that no no you didn't donald trump can uh has realized that he no longer controls the media cycle like he did during the campaign and that just because the president goes out somewhere and does something that doesn't mean that it's going to be that day's news cycle. The I news cycle today was the vice president flying on his plane with his birthday party, <laughs> taking selfies with Ted Cruz. Of course. So, Lion Ted. <laughs> so I, be I believe that this is may – it may not rise to the level of obstruction of justice, but it is troubling to a level that someone who is uh, – I find Jim, Jim Comey credible. I find James Comey – to be somebody that is hated by both sides, so therefore, anytime a public servant is hated by politicians on either side, they're probably a good public servant. Why don't you stand with Rand? He voted no. Uh, 99 to 1, and here you are on the wrong side 99 of 99 to 1 for what? Confirmation of... Uh of Comey. Director Comey. I don't I don't I have no idea why he voted no. But in in this instance I think that Jim Comey James Comey has been painted into a lot of corners and he has done what he has felt is best and has done things that he knew were politically going to get him murdered or literally murdered uh, and uh, has said what he thinks what he believes to be the truth and I think that his behavior uh, after this meeting shows that he certainly thinks that it is uh, well it may not, it's something very serious and troubling because James Comey made detailed notes about every single thing that was said he then talked with his uh, his I don't know underlings deputy deputy, deputy directors director, people Rosenstein you know, he made sure that they or, were, uh, Andrew McCabe they were aware of it but they did not tell any of the people working on the cases about this particular meeting because they didn't want to taint that investigation and they also didn't want to open an investigation on trump because then if they were asked if they had ever done one they wouldn't have to admit to closing it which right. would be bad for the president right the reason that the reason he briefed him on that of the nature of that of how bad that would be politically for him he advised the president right so and then on top of that when the first time the, he gets alone with his superior in jeff sessions he says to sessions Hey, not for nothing, never leave me alone with that guy again. I don't want to be in a room alone with that guy because I am now in an untenable position because I've been put in a position that puts me in legal peril, him in legal peril, you in legal peril, and this is a serious problem. And so, uh, yes, and so Donald Trump was putting pressure on him to publicly say that Donald Trump was not the... The, he wanted it out there because the anonymous sources kept, you know, alleging that, the that Don, he was. And ben Donald Trump fed that too by saying his phones were tapped at Trump Towers because of Carter right. Page and Paul Manafort, and so he wanted a confirm. He wanted uh, James Comey to come out and say directly the Trump Donald Trump was not the subject of an investigation to stop the rumors that he was. Sure. And so the reason that he didn't want to do that is because of what happened during the election, where they come out and they say yes, and then they have to come out later and say no. You know, in this case, no, he's not under investigation. Well, now we're opening an investigation. And then the media scrutiny that would be the, the political scrutiny that the FBI would be under while trying to do an investigation into the president of the United States would make the investigation so untenable that it wouldn't be functional. And so what 
Comey was saying to the president, who was refusing to listen, is that I'm protecting you, I'm protecting the FBI, I'm protecting the federal government, uh, and I'm The doing independence of the agency, because you don't want to lose institutional trust in the people responsible for investigating high crimes and Absolutely. Treason. And so what this all speaks to what we have always known about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is so self-centered, and part of, part of us love the fact that Donald Trump is an outsider, and that Donald Trump doesn't give a fuck about the system. But I watched Lindsey Graham. God forbid I ever agree with Lindsey Graham on anything, but I felt what he had to say last night on special report on Fox News was with Brett Hume. Oh, Brett Hume. Brett Baer was very interesting. He what he never answered a question to Brett or to uh, Brett Bear. He never answered the question towards the audience. He addressed every answer that he was asked last night on special report to the president of the United States. He said, "Well, my advice to you, Mr. President, is that you should do X, Y, and Z." And he and at the end, uh, Brett goes, "Well, hopefully the president was listening." And he goes, "I hope he was too. I'm sure he was." I mean, because these guys now know that all he does is sit in front of the TV and watch these shows. Well, he also, you know, his world's getting smaller and smaller. And, like, the people he trusts are just, it's down to basically Rince Priebus, the vice president, Steve Bannon, and then Jared Kushner, and then Ivanka. Right. And, and so, Kellyanne Conway. And, and, and so as his world goes sm grows smaller, he's he's now becoming more and more obsessed with his image and his... He he said to the Comey, "You've got to help me out here. The 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 ability of the presidency to do anything, aka my legacy, is on the line here. You've got to release me from this Russian thing." And he, well, he just wanted him to report that there was no investigation of Donald Trump, which sure. he didn't want to because in the event they opened one, he'd have to say that it had been opened if he was asked. And so what what uh, Lindsey Graham said last night on Fox News is the president. Mr. President, you need to just understand that there are mechanisms set in place. The system is here to protect you. You don't need to do too much. If you did nothing wrong, and most of us believe that you've done nothing wrong... It will take care of itself. It will take care of itself, and you need to just be quiet, stop tweeting, and let the system work. And he seems to be refusing to do that. He's calling the FBI director and possibly getting himself an obstruction, obstruction of justice charge... Up uh, on on bat is a perjury charge for somebody somewhere soon. This is what happened to Clinton. It's like, is it a big deal? He got a blowjob in the office? No, but it wasn't illegal. But the second you start obstructing it's, it's and the, the second you start... You. It's the cover-up that gets you every single time. The and nice thing is, I mean, he was... You could say he was smart enough or he was devious enough to make sure it's a he said, she said situation and that there, you know, there is enough reasonable doubt exists. Because at the end of the day, Director Comey's notes are based on a recollection of events. Absolutely. And the fact that he corroborated those events with three of his colleagues at the uh, Department of Justice and the FBI, they're hearing it now secondhand. That doesn't give it any more credibility in the court of law, because it is still, I mean, it does if a preponderance of evidence The court, is the court the, of law doesn't mean anything when you have a House of Representatives election coming up in 15 months. Man, I'll tell you, the court but of they public are, they opinion is at yes. stake now. Yeah, the court of public opinion is, but it, at the same time, his approval rating is higher than Bill Clinton's was at the same point in the presidency. Bill Clinton lost a whole lot of seats in, the, in his first midterm yeah. election. Well, Newt Gingrich and the Ditto Head Caucus. Yeah. You know, but I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't think that's the case per se. And from what I can tell from polling is the... The majority of people don't care about the Russian elect. Right. They really they and, and Donald Trump's caucus has already shut out any any press that, that disagrees with what they say. It, you're you're 100 percent right. Like they're the Kim Kardashian caucus. Like they're a reality TV caucus that's immune to the, the real news. Even even myself, who was who couldn't have been more critical of Donald Trump through the election, who is certainly no fan of Donald Trump, I have said on this podcast if we have agreed about the russian thing there is no there is no there there no there, there is nothing there what it's, mike it, flynn did wrong was he didn't report thirty three thousand dollars paid to him by real uh russia today to go get, deliver a speech and be seated next to a table and he should have reported that and then also registered as a foreign agent and gotten it approved with the department of state and didn't right then contact with the russian ambassador is unusual given he hadn't been seated yet this is all transition team stuff. Yeah. This is all from before he was even president. Right. right. And and I, I have to say that while we don't care about the Russian stuff, Americans will care about obstruction of justice and perjury. Yeah, and he just doesn't have – there isn't any obstruction of justice because if I say I hope you let it go 
that isn't you're not able to say i asked him to let it go right right i would hope you would versus you need to drop this you you've been instructed to drop the investigation you're looking at it hold on here let me finish this point and then then sorry i'll stop monologuing but uh i think that the democrats i don't know that they've been playing 8d intergalactic chess Uh, with this i don't think that they're smart enough to box donald trump in the way that they have boxed him in by playing on his personality so well but if you were to look back you could say there is a conspiracy to get donald trump by creating the russian narrative keeping it in the media keeping him obsessed with it to the point that he will now start doing things to protect his ego and legacy the paranoia kicks in the paranoia kicks in that he will now start doing things that are illegal and we can't sit here and say that Donald Trump is done towing the line of obstruction of justice. No, he got right up to the le- the edge. Because he's going to keep doing it. This and is four months in. And so now, if I'm a Democrat, if I'm Chuck Schumer sitting there, I'm going, oh, he blinked. We got him. We just got to keep this going, and he will just keep, we'll keep rattling his cage. And then eventually, we're going to win the House back, and we're going to impeach him. Like, to me, I would never have thought of it, but now I'm looking at it going... He's so obsessed with this that he's going to commit a crime. We just need to keep the pressure on and let Donald be Donald. Yeah, um, I don't. I, I I don't foresee that happening because of the nature of the upcoming midterms. Like this, I, they're not going to lose the Senate and they're not going to lose the House. Correct. Personally, yeah. like that. It, that's in my I, opinion. I think I, yeah, because I think, outside of him asking Tim to actually stop the investigation, like that discovery. Mm-hmm. Which at this point it is second the the FBI director took notes after a meeting Donald Trump and in it what he recalls from memory isn't a crime or anything doing anything wrong and then Mike Rogers and Dan Coast just testified director of the CIA and National uh, NSA they just testified today that they never felt pressure by the Trump administration to stop any investigation completely critical that the Republicans pass at least two big tr- things in this in this summer session yeah, they got to do right. tax reform. And and healthcare. Yeah, but they got to lead. They got to lead with tax reform because that's actually part of the healthcare bill. Like that. Right. They go hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. But they they have have to have accomplishments going in because it's going to be it's going to be campaign season and they will have nothing to run off of and the only thing that they're going to have to deal with is their failures and this investigation. You you promised you promised a wall. You promised Obamacare repeal and you promised a healthy economy. You got to do those three things if you're Donald Trump. The thing is, they pinned him on the transportation bill because there's no reason not to support it, whether you're a Democrat. Um, based on the way it's structured, outside of the privatization of the FAA, it would be a bill that you could walk right out of a Democratic committee. Mm-hmm. And so that and that that's job creation, and that's putting the ball in their court. So that is, he can just wail away on Twitter about why Democrats are anti-American worker. Yeah. The other thing that has always got me with this whole like this trying to go after Trump like that. If they are playing like uh, that 8D galactic backgammon, the thing is that the thing is the Democrats would have to use this whole like this whole thing to get it to bump somebody up for four years to get a name out there for 2020. They don't have anybody. They need to use this to find that rising star to go after Trump like that. That's what they're using it for. They're hoping somebody will stand up and mend the testimony. I'm like, wow, this person, this is our person in four years. They went after Trump. They went after the Lion King. So, but you know, right now they've just got what? what? It's going to be Joe Biden if they're smart, and he'll he, he's the yeah. only person in America that could in the Democratic Party that could beat Donald Trump in a matchup. But the they're Democrats, it, yeah. so they won't be smart. Right. Well, he, I mean, he's got a pack, and he's going around giving speeches. But Joe's also older, correct? Than the president, you know. And, correct. But he, you know, Joe's arguably he's like the exact same agenda as Donald Trump, but he is everybody's you know kind of goofy uncle. And he's got like the likability, and the, he's slightly more affable than the you know he's not. Um, people get tired of strong leaders, mm-hmm. like people that people love it after a while, but then they start to tire of the constant like um, the constant force of will and, mm-hmm. and the chaos and the what feels like overreach by you know uh, leaving expected norms. Yeah, because that's what's weak. killing the president right now. But a lot of it is because he doesn't have any Republicans on his side. Yeah. The Republican Congress is killing him. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're not going to see it a vote on health care. What uh, McConnell said till September? Yeah, yeah, till till September, and and uh, and they're they're out of excuses. They will have nothing, and they're they they had every excuse in the book up until this point, and now what? They just dragging their feet because they want to. 
Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately, the Republicans have had this down to a science for since like the 1950s. Is yeah. that they just you know obstruct any type of legislation possible and just mm -hmm. yell, cry foul. But eventually, you do have to get something done, and by doing it, once you make it, once they can can get the narrative to be that there's no reason anyone would be against it and make it about the merits of the bill, that mm -hmm. does put pressure on Democrats because then you say, well, why didn't you want roads, bridges, American workers to go back? Right. I mean, even Jeremiah, the libertarian king of Henry County, supports publicly funded roads and sells the <laughs> steel they're built, the bridges are built with. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I like to drive my car, man. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. But I mean, the transportation yeah. bill is a solid bill if you're right. a, if you're a big, you know, big government statist. I just wish that if my, you know, that I was the one that wrecked my truck. But whatever, that's fine. <laughs> Personal responsibility just, and all. I just want smooth, flat roads. Why can't they be flat? That's why I don't like driving my RX-8 all the you time. You live in the flattest part of America, Harry. No, there's potholes everywhere. <laughs> my car's too low to the ground, so I'm driving the Subaru around because there's freaking potholes Harry, everywhere. I know you've been through a lot, but come on. <laughs> what? <laughs> Subaru. I like, oh. It's yeah. an Indiana-made car. Yeah. Yeah. He's Hoosier through and through. Yeah. Sure. I even got, like, my America rotary motor. <laughs> what? Burns more gas than anybody's truck here. 13 miles to the gallon. Fuel efficiency. Uh, that's, a, that's a tie with my truck. Oh, 13. <laughs> All right, so Eleven James Coe on the boat. So Dr. I'm looking Co forward to his testimony no. tomorrow. As long as it's not yeah. anything other than his remarks. It's going to be good. Yeah. I mean, I can't... They said the D.C. bars are planning... Um, Entire, they're planning entire happy hours around his testimony tomorrow mm -hmm. and using it as like a, a, uh. an event. Yeah. I, I feel like we're gearing up for the Super Bowl, but it's going to be a high school football game. If he sticks to what yeah. he released, this thing's over. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, like Rich Lowry reviewed it, and all of the editors at the National Review reviewed it, and there's no so there's no obstruction his, of justice. He's written his testimony, but he's going to answer questions, right? Yeah, he's going to answer questions. So that's where it gets interesting. Well, but, if it goes anything like the questions today to <laughs> yeah, Dan but, Coates and uh, you know Mike what? Rogers, but can we like rewind back to the Benghazi hearing? And I was remember just Hillary that. Clinton's testimony when she was up there and but how disappointing that it. was. <laughs> yeah, but you have to also uh, Jim James Comey is very boring. And 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 Hillary is a little more brash. That's why he's a bureaucrat, and she almost won. She won the popular vote for presidency. James Comey is not going to say anything more, in my opinion, tomorrow than uh, I, I'm just going to l refer to my statement and leave it at that. Mm. I mean, that's that's really what I think. He's he'll he'll he's not going to say anything broad and sweeping. He's never been the kind of guy who's going to throw the system under the bus. And that is ultimately what he feels he is protecting, in my view. He is protecting the system. He is protecting the FBI. And he, he doesn't care about protecting Donald Trump, but he knows that to protect Donald Trump is to protect the presidency, which protects the executive branch. And that ultimately is what he cares about. And he's not going to go too far out of, on a limb. Oh, I'm calling it now. It's going to be so disappointing that the liberal tears will be delicious. <laughs> and I also, we're at the point where... If you get your news from, like, it, you even see it with like libertarians, we get an entirely different news stories than anyone that like is a normie that we <laughs> interact with. Yeah, Republicans get all of their news stories from news sources that reinforce everything they already believe. And if you read the t the president's t the president's already responded to Comey's testimony, and in it he says this is the exact vindication of everything I've always been saying. I was never the subject of an investigation. And he uh, and I never asked for him to stop the, he took any to investigation. Twitter to announce Comey's replacement the week he's testifying. That was brilliant. To, yeah. to, uh, offer. We're up, moving on now. Yeah, he offered the new FBI director uh, Ray, isn't it? Chris yeah, Ray. Christopher yeah. Ray. Yeah, Christopher Ray, who is the Bridgegate attorney for Chris Christie's people that were found guilty and <laughs> got a sweetheart deal. And then um, I, they said though, that this guy he's pretty young. He went to Yale Law, Yale undergrad. He's from Georgia. Zell Miller, um, and oh, Saxby, Saxby Chambliss, like. Called him a good boy, back oh, boy. back when he was confirmed oh, for the okay. Department of Justice uh, position <laughs> under George W. Bush. Is he black? No, oh. no, no, no. He's as white as white gets. Yeah. Like a family, long, a nice Southern tradition of uh, family attorneys. Mm -hmm. uh. And so he uh, he went and got rich this last year in private practice for mm -hmm. Spalding and or King Spalding, and I think in Atlanta. Spalding. Yeah, and uh, now, but now he's the new director of the FBI, and it's I'll tell you though, it's a big job for a guy this young because you don't see FBI directors this this young. He led right. the criminal division of the justice department from 03 to 05 under w yeah yes. right after 9 11 right yeah he's somebody that is well known in washington dc but it's he, just a big leap ahead yeah mm -hmm. and then uh, trump released his appellate jor um appellate court replacements today and they are all badass like really? gorsuch oh, level yeah he, he appointed three he constitutionalists are like 
it's like you just took people what? better than Scalia and appointed them to the appellate courts. They're right. losing their mind over how – even like uh, David French for the National Review, who's the biggest Trump critic there is, was like, damn it. <laughs> These people – he did three bios on all of them. And so yeah, – I feel bad I missed that. Yeah, well, it got drowned out. You know, and the FBI director, okay. most people didn't even see that, you know, Chris Ray got appointed today or they announced it. But if – unless Comey changes his tune, which he can't – he can't say that he was under investigation because then he committed perjury when he testified and then he lied to the president. Right. Right. So he's kind of boxed in. The only thing you can say is, did you feel pressured? And Rogers and Coates already said no. And I would be shocked if he said, yes, I felt that the president was trying to handle me or pressure me into stopping the investigation into Michael Flynn. Right. Mm -hmm. I really question Dan Coates' career choices at this point, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. There is no one who is more establishment than Dan Coates in the history of U.S. politics. <laughs> like, he is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. He did what Evan Bay did, only like when Evan Bay came back here to run in Indiana for Senate. He was a, s a senator in the 90s yeah. in Indiana, and then he left. and he got went scared to, off by Evan Bay. Went and did, did defense contracting. Yep. yep. And yep. then came back and won, and like out of nowhere, because he didn't, he was like, oh, it's so great back to be in the Hoosier State, and he hadn't been back here in 13 years or something <laughs> yeah, like right. that. Yep. Mm -hmm. He literally lived in uh, Virginia. He's, Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. He's our yep. senator from Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> and then he retires and takes the uh, takes this job with Obama or, or with uh, with Trump. And honestly, he should have stayed retired because now he's got a bigger mess in his hands than he well, ever than he ever could ask for. I don't know. I, I don't know that this is I, I maybe I'm crazy, but I don't think this is going to change any. I don't at worst, no matter how bad this gets. I think the Republicans still maintain the House and still maintain the Senate mm -hmm. at best. If Trump does get progress and they actually make pro if they repeal Obamacare or, you know, even though it's not the best bill, but it's what's available to get. I think they pick up seats. It's it's just based on the way it's set it up. Re it really depends upon performance at this point. It, I think. It, it it depends on them having a team that's competent, and when you're pushing out Jeff Sessions, who offered to resign. Well, he didn't like it that he he stepped he recused himself on this. Sure. Which that's when Comey's notes. That's what he had talked about with the other. Um, his deputy director and then someone from justice was that it would be likely that in this event Sessions would recuse himself and the president. As you can see from when you actually read what he said during the dinner they had in the green room, just the two of them, it, loyal. Like he asked him flat out, he's like, "I need loyalty," and he's like, "Well, I'll give you honesty." And then the president says, "I need honest loyalty." <laughs> <laughs> and and so like you, it's crystal clear. And like he talks about how it was just an awkward pause, and neither would after the president said he needed loyalty after the honesty response by Comey, silence, and they just it was a standoff. I just I look at this and I go, okay, he's pushing out Sessions, he's pushing out Priebus, he's pushing out any, he's bringing in Lewandowski who is abusive to people. Uh, I I just don't feel that he is. It, Donald Trump is as incompetent, if not more so, than we thought he was going to be. Like he is at this point just completely obsessed with his image, and he is completely unable to let people go out and do what they're what they do best like the transportation stuff he he continually dips his hand in instead of letting elaine chow who mitch mcconnell's wife mitch mcconnell's wife she's who, got some clout who yeah. worked in the bush administration in the cabinet she's the transportation secretary he's he's interfering he's tweeting he you look at the what he is doing he's undermining the investigation uh by uh, uh, he's not in the investigation but the court rulings where his lawyers are arguing that this isn't a muslim ban well he was mad jeff what sessions watered down the language right but then he goes out and tweets that it's a ban twitter is going to undo him and so yes it it sean spicer is right it is what makes him special because it is direct access it is what got him elected but at the same time you're not a candidate anymore and i don't think that he has fully understood that yet and by the the tweets undermine his people's ability to go out and further his agenda his actions are the ones he's like having that boss we've all had that boss where it's just like dude I know what I'm doing. Just let get out of my way and let me do my job. Yeah, you know. And but unfortunately, this is the president of the United States. Like you look at the State Department. Our next topic. I think this might be a good time to transition if we're done on Comey. Yeah. If, if you said everything that you. Well, I mean, there there isn't. Said. I mean, the president responded, and you know, his response, the RNC's response, is that you know it's vindication for what he's been saying all along. He never pressured anybody, and he was never the subject of investigation. But the media, the media, the media.